Hey, what is going on guys? Jolts here, back with another video, and today we got a first look at Black Skill Tree. So before we get into the video, I just want to give a huge thanks to 2K and Gearbox for letting me record this video and have it up for you guys on day one. Thank you so much guys, I super appreciate it. Okay, onto the Hunter Skill Tree, we have the Spider Ant Centurion. This is going to be one of your three pets on the battlefield. The cool thing about this too is this is not your action skill. This is like a passive pet that's just going to be on the battlefield at all times and will fight for you. Flag is joined by a loyal spider and companion, which will cause Flag to constantly regenerate health. So if you look at an enemy on the battlefield and you hold the left bumper, you can actually target them with your pet. I'm not sure what button that would be on a different console, but um, anyways, when you target them, your pet will actually go out and attack them. Anyways, if you don't actually issue the attack, then your pet will go around and attack whatever it wants. This is useful if you have a lot of enemies around you and your pet's kind of not sure which one to attack. So you could choose, hey, go for the Alpha Skag because he's a little bit harder to kill. With the Spider Ant Centurion active, you'll have a health regeneration of 1% per second. Onto the action skill, we have Rack Attack. Black sends forward two racks to dive bomb enemies. This skill has multiple charges. Damage, 254. That will change, you know, depending on your level. Cooldown, 18 seconds. Skill charges, too, so you can actually use it twice before you have to cool it down. Deals incendiary elemental damage. And at the bottom there, it says, in your mind, you can fly. So this skill isn't going to be active on the battlefield like your spider ant. Instead, it's more like how Mordecai was with Bloodwing in Borderlands 1. You throw them out, they do damage, and they disappear. Moving on to the first skill here, we have Interplanetary Stalker. Whenever Flag kills an enemy, they gain a stack of Interplanetary Stalker. For each stack of Interplanetary Stalker, they gain a bonus to all damage dealt. Additionally, they gain a unique stacking bonus depending on the type of enemy killed. Each unique bonus can stack up to three times. Each stack decays after a short time. Damage, 2% per stack. Robot bonus, 1.5% corrosive damage per stack. Human bonus, 3% action skill damage per stack. And finally, beast bonus, 2% movement speed per stack. Now, you can see on the left side of the box, you can scroll down a little bit, but I can assure you there's no more text. Leave no trace. When Flag scores a critical hit, there is a chance for one ammo to be added to their magazine. Chance to add ammo, 60%. I do want to point out that I did have a class mod on to boost it even more, so that's why you see 5 out of 3. This skill does seem like it could be pretty insane. Imagine hitting a critical hit with a sniper over and over and over and never having to reload. That skill could be pretty crazy. Second intention. Hunter kill skill, whenever Flag kills an enemy, they gain increased reload speed. This bonus is increased if Flag scores a critical kill. Reload speed at 13%. Critical kill reload speed 23%. Critical kill reload duration 5 seconds. By now you can see a theme with the skill tree, and yes, it is based on critical hits. Hunter's Eye. Flag gains bonuses when fighting different types of enemies. Critical hit damage, 3% versus humans. Armor damage, 6% versus robots. Damage reduction, 5.3% versus beasts. So, you're getting bonuses across all different types of enemies, I do like that. Head count. Whenever Flag scores a critical hit, there is a chance their action skill cooldown is reduced. Cooldown time reduction chance, 30%. Cooldown time, minus 2 seconds. I am a fan of that because the more you hit crits, the more you're rewarded. Ambush Predator. While there are no enemies nearby, Flag's weapon handling and critical hit damage are increased. Handling, 38%. Critical hit damage, 12%. This skill is suited for long range combat or sniping since you don't want enemies nearby. If your playstyle is more of a run and gun situation, then this skill is not for you. Now we have Two Fang, and yeah, it does return, but it is a little bit different. Flag has a chance to fire an extra projectile per shot. Extra chance, 25%. So, let's say you have a shotgun times 7, so it would make it times 8, which means you get a little more damage. For a single pellet gun, such as a sniper or SMG or whatever, you're getting double damage every now and then. I do wonder though, will this actually work on rocket launchers too? We'll have to wait and see. Big game. Flag's hunter skills become much more effective and have a longer duration. Hunter skill duration, 100%. Hunter skill effects, 30%. The most dangerous game. Hunter kill skill. Whenever Flag kills a stronger enemy, they gain increased critical hit damage, gun damage, and handling for a long time. Additionally, they receive a cash reward from an intergalactic bureau of bounty hunting. Gun damage, 8%. Critical hit damage, 3.3%. Handling, 14.3%. Duration, 120 seconds. And rewards cash on kill. You're getting even more damage and also getting paid for it. Now, I do wonder what the payout is actually going to be. If you recall, from Borderlands 1, there was a skill called Prize Fighter and Brick Skill Tree, in which when you punch things, you get money. Early game, it wasn't all that bad, you did get free money every now and then, but for late game, it did not scale that great. So I'm really hoping it scales properly for the end game. Galactic Shadow. Black deals increased critical hit damage, and enemies are less likely to attack him. Critical hit damage, 15%. 
It sounds to be a pretty good skill, but it does require some testing. Is it only 5% of enemies won't attack you, or 10%, or 15? I do question that. Grim Harvest. Flight gains increase gun damage and action skill damage. Gun damage, 3%. Action skill damage, 5%. For the capstone, we have Megavore. Flight gains a chance to score a critical hit with weapons against any part of enemies. Critical hit chance, 20%. Yeah, so if this is what I think it is, it could be very broken. If you guys remember Nisha from the pre-sequel, she had a skill called Tombstone. Basically, it did the same thing, but it was a kill skill. I'm gonna go ahead and play a clip now just to kinda demonstrate what I mean. If that's gonna be a thing in this game, then Flag is going to be amazing. Okay, onto the augments. If you don't know what augments are, it's something you attach to your action skill, and for Flax case, it's a bonus you can also put on your pet. Rack open a cold one. That is a reference to a very popular meme. Converts Flax rack to cryo damage. Deals cryo elemental damage. On the bottom it says freeze them in their tracks. Falconer's Feast. When Flax rack damages an enemy, a portion of Flax health is restored. Health returned at 7% of max health. That sounds like a really good survival skill. Block and load. Flag sends forward an additional rack. Additional rack, plus two. So you can already see if you combo this with one of the other augments, you can restore even more health or freeze enemies easier. A really good augment. Rack accelerate. Flag's racks have an increased cooldown rate and gain an additional charge. Skill charges, plus one. Cooldown rate, 20%. Onto your pet augment. So a spider ant scorcher. Flag spider ant evolves into a scorcher, occasionally dealing incendiary damage to all enemies nearby. While accompanied by the Scorcher, Flag constantly regenerates health and gains elemental resistance. When Flag issues an attack command, the Scorcher will charge enemies. Health regeneration, 1% of max health per second. Elemental damage, 10%. Spider Ant Countess. Flag Spider Ant evolves into a Countess, which will cause Flag to constantly regenerate health and gain damage reduction. When Flag issues an attack command, the Countess will burrow underground and then emerge dealing corrosive damage in the area. Health regeneration, 1% of max health per second. Damage reduction, 5%. And I should have mentioned before, but with the augments, you can switch them around at any time you want to. So you're in the middle of battle, and then you're like, oh crap, there's a flesh enemy. Let me switch over from the corrosive to the fire one. You could do that. Now, as for the skill points, you gotta go back and find a respect station. That is all for the hunter skill tree, so let's move on. We have the stalker skill tree. For your pet, you have a jabber sidekick. Flag is joined by a loyal jabber companion armed with a pistol. While accompanied by the jabber, Flag's movement speed is increased. By holding the attack command button, the jabber will actually throw radiation barrels at enemies. Movement speed, 5%. This pet is really cool, and unlike the spider ant pet, this guy is more based on range. For the action skill, you will have fade away. Flag cloaks turning invisible. Flag can fire up to three shots while cloaked, and each shot is automatically a critical hit. Awesome. While cloaked, Flag has increased movement speed and health regeneration. Fade away critical hit damage, 200%. Cloaked movement speed, 25%. Health regeneration at 3% of max health per second, cooldown at 45 seconds, and skill duration at 15 seconds. This skill is similar to Zero's Deception, except when you shoot, you won't end it. This action skill is one of my favorites and definitely makes running and gunning more exciting. Self repairing system. Flax maximum health is increased, and they constantly regenerate health. Health regeneration at 0.3% of max health per second, max health 6%. Sikkim. Attack command has a lower cooldown and increased damage. Attack Command Damage, 10%. Attack Command Cooldown, minus 10%. This skill gives you a reason to choose your enemies with your Attack Command, instead of letting them free roam. Furious Attack. Hunter Skill. After shooting an enemy, Flag gains a stack of Furious Attack. For each stack of Furious Attack, Flag's handling and gun damage are increased. Stacks decay after a few seconds. Gun damage, 0.4% per stack. Handling, 1% per stack. Furious Attack Stacks, 10. Furious Attack Duration, 4 seconds. Eager to impress. Kill skill. Whenever Flag kills an enemy, action skill cooldown time is reduced. Whenever Flag's pet kills an enemy, action skill cooldown time is reduced even more, and attack's command's cooldown is refreshed. Flag's kill cooldown time at minus 0.25 seconds. Pet kill cooldown time at minus 0.5 seconds. All my BFFs. Allies share a portion of Flag's total health regeneration. Flag's pets share twice the amount of health regeneration. Allies share 17% of Flag's health regeneration. Hmm, it makes me wonder, you know, what if you have four flax and like everybody does like a health regen build? Do you just never die? I do question that. Overclocked. Flag gains increased fire rate. Flag gains even more fire rate after reloading. Fire rate after reloading at 2%? Fire rate 
overclock duration in 4 seconds. Lick the wounds. When Flacus and Fife are alive, their pet will attempt to revive them. And below that it says play dead. I am so happy they added this skill. Even if you're playing solo, you will have a friend there to revive you. Turn tail and run. While moving, Flag constantly regenerates health and gains damage reduction. While still, Flag gains gun damage and fire rate. Health regeneration while moving at 0.3% of max health per second. Damage reduction while moving at 6.5%. Gun damage while still 8.3%. Fire rate while still 4%. Depending on the way you play, this skill will adapt to all playstyles. The Fast and the Furious. While above half health, Flag's gun damage and movement speed are increased. Gun damage 8%, movement speed 3.3%. Hidden Machine. When an enemy has no target or is attacking a different target, Flak deals increased damage against them. Damage 6%. So if you're being stealthy or playing out of range, this skill could really benefit you. Rage and Recover. Kill Skill. After killing an enemy, Flak and Flak's pets regenerate health for a few seconds. Health regeneration 1.6 of missing health per second. Rage and Recover duration 3 seconds. For the Capstone, we have the power inside. Flak and Flak's pet gain increased damage when Flak activates an action skill. If Flag is at full health, the increased damage is doubled. Damage, 25%. The power inside duration, 15 seconds. That sounds like a really good skill, so if you're at full health, you're getting 50% damage on yourself and your pet. Okay, onto the augments, we have Gorillas in the Mist. Fade away, um, you know, the action skill we talked about earlier, the cloaking, no longer ends after Flag attacks, at the cost of critical hit damage and fade away duration being reduced. Critical hit damage, 50%. Duration, 8 seconds. Now you might be thinking that sounds like a really bad augment. By itself, Fade Away has 3 shots and then you're done, you're out of the cloaking. Think about using a fully auto weapon. Depending on the weapon, you could get out, you know, maybe like 50 shots, and that's going to be more DPS than 3 shots. The way I'm seeing it is so, for a slower, you know, higher damage weapon, you probably don't want this. But for a gun that has a lot of fire rate, you probably do want this. Not my circus. After Fade Away ends, Flag's pet will taunt, drawing the attention of all nearby enemies in a huge radius. For a few seconds after taunting, the pet gains a powerful damage reduction. Pet damage reduction 80%, pet taunt duration 6 seconds. And at the bottom it says, not my monkeys. So all of those skills before in which you get bonuses for enemies not focused on you, this skill can combo really well with that. Until you are dead. The health regeneration and movement speed of Fade Away persists for a short time after the skill is ended. Post cloak duration 10 seconds. Unblinking Eye. Successive hits on the same target increases Flag's critical damage per hit. Unblinking Eye resets every 3 hits. Critical hit damage, 75% per hit. That means you can stack up to 225% crit damage. Very strong. Onto the pet augments, we have the Beefcake Jabber. Flag's Jabber evolves into a Beefcake, discarding its pistol and equipping a shotgun. While accompanied by the Beefcake, Flag gains increased movement speed and maximum health. When Flag issues an attack command, the Beefcake will summon a melee weapon to deliver a powerful attack and knock enemies back. Movement speed 5%, max health 10%. Gunslinger Jabber. Flag's Jabber upgrades his gear and equips an SMG. While accompanied by the Gunslinger, Flag gains increased movement speed and critical hit damage. When Flag issues an attack command, the Gunslinger equips a rocket launcher to attack the target. Movement speed 5%, critical hit damage 5%. So just like the spider ant, you can choose if you want more of a offensive setup or a defensive setup. Onto the final tree, we have the master tree. For your pet, you have a guard skag. Flag is joined by a loyal skag companion, which will increase Flag's damage. When you hold your attack command button over an enemy, the skag will vomit acid onto enemies. Damage 5%. Gamma burst. Flag creates a rift in the target's location, teleporting their pet through the rift and dealing radiation damage to nearby enemies. Additionally, Black's pet becomes irradiated, growing in size and dealing bonus radiation damage when it attacks. Using Gamma Burst while Flag's pet is downed or dead will revive the pet at the targeted location at 30% of its health, but will double action skill cooldown time. Damage 406, skill duration 20 seconds, cooldown 30 seconds. Again, you can see a scroll down bar on the left side of the page, but I can assure you that's all the text. So after reading this, we can assume that Flag's pets do have a health bar and can go down. I do wonder, will we be able to manually revive them? Ferocity. Flag's pet deals increased damage. Pet damage, 10%. That's a pretty big bonus, so if you max that out at 5 points, then you're getting 50% more, and who knows how much more you can boost it with a class mod. Persistence Hunter. Increases Flag's gun damage and action skill duration. Gun damage, 4%. Action skill duration, 15%. Go for the eyes. When Flag's pet attacks an enemy, the first melee attack is an automatic critical hit that deals increased damage. Pet critical hit damage, 15%. Who rescued who? Whenever Flag's pet deals damage, Flag regenerates health for a few seconds. Whenever Flag deals damage to the enemy, 
Their pet's health is restored for a portion of damage dealt. Health regeneration, 0.4% of max health per second, and converts 1% of damage dealt into pet's health. He bites. When Flax pet takes damage, the pet returns some of that damage to the attacker. Damage reflected at 5%. Frenzy. Hunter skill. When Flax pet deals damage, Flax and her pet gains a stack of Frenzy. Each stack of Frenzy increases damage. The stacks decay after a few seconds. Damage, 0.8% per stack. Max Frenzy stacks, 10. Psycho head on the stick. Hunter kill skill. Whenever Flack kills an enemy, the pet gains increased movement speed and damage for a few seconds. Pet damage, 13%. Pet movement speed, 16%. Psycho head on a stick duration, 8 seconds. Hive mind. When Flack takes damage, a portion of all damage they take is shared to the pets instead. Damage shared, 5%. Aw oh, man, I would hate to hurt my pets, you know, they're part of the team. Barbaric Yop Increases the power of pet bonuses granted to Flag. Pet bonuses, 20%. Mutated Defenses When Flag's pet is at low health, it gains damage reduction and regenerates health. This skill has a long cooldown. Health regeneration, 40% of max pet health over 6 seconds. Damage reduction, 30% for 6 seconds. Mutated Defenses cooldown, 15 seconds. That's a pretty good skill for keeping your pets alive, I like it. Pack Tactics All damage dealt by Flag in their pet is increased. Additionally, the maximum health of both Flak and their pet is increased. Pet and Flak damage, 5%. Pet and Flak maximum health, 5%. Shared Spirit. While Flak is at low health, a portion of all damage they take is shared with their pets instead. Damage shared at 50%. Again, not a fan of hurting my own pets, but I guess they are defending their master, right? For the capstone, we have Dominance. Melee Override Skill. Flak establishes dominance over an enemy, turning them into an ally for a short time. If the enemy is a beast, the duration is doubled. While under the effects of dominance, the target constantly loses health until it dies or the effect ends. Only one enemy can be dominated at a time. An enemy can only be dominated once. Dominance duration at 12 seconds, and target loses 2% of max health per second. That skill sounds like a lot of fun, and if you recall in Borderlands 2, we had a skill with Maya called Thoughtlock. It seems very similar to that. Now the question is, where is the limit? Will I be able to grab, you know, a boss and have him fight for me? Or even better yet, if there is a raid boss in this game, can we control that? On to the augments, we have Atomic Aroma. While Gamma Burst is active, Black's pet is surrounded by a radiation aura, constantly damaging all nearby enemies. Radiation damage, 27 per second. Empathic Rage. For the duration of Gamma Burst, damage dealt by Flak is increased. Damage, 20%. Endurance. When Flak or Flak's pet kills an enemy while Gamma Burst is active, the duration of Gamma Burst is extended and pet damage is increased. These effects can stack up to 5 times. Skill duration at 3 seconds per kill. Pet damage 10% per kill. Burst Aid. After using Gamma Burst, the rift remains for the duration of the skill. While standing near the rift, Flak and their allies rapidly regenerate health. Health regeneration at 20% of max health per second. Onto the pet augments, we have the Great Horn Skag. Flak Skag evolves into a larger Great Horn Skag, which will increase Flak's damage and gun damage. When Flak issues an attack command, the Great Horn Skag will charge at the enemies and knock them into the air. Damage, 5%. Gun damage, 10%. Iridian Skag. Flak Skag evolves into an Iridian Skag, which will increase Flak's damage and fire rate. When Flak issues an attack command, the Iridian Skag pulls nearby enemies in by generating a singularity. Damage, 5%. Fire rate, 5%. So both of these Skag augments are more of a offensive approach. I like that. That's it for the skill trees, so let me know below what you guys think about Flak. For me, I do question how some of the mechanics work, so I do want to see some gameplay before I decide. But as of right now, I am leaning more towards Moe's, but we'll have to wait and see. Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and of course, if you did, please be sure to leave a like, because that'd be awesome. And I will catch you all later. Yeah, peace out.